Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, I saw this title and I was like, oh my word, I am intrigued. It's from Suspicious Fruit 243 and says, Am I the asshole for refusing to tattoo at my cousin's wedding? away because i'm not sure if my family uses reddit lol <laughs> so a little to my background i am a tattoo artist i've done an apprenticeship the first year of tattooing i work as a tattoo artist for four years now and i opened a studio recently me and my family are invited to a wedding that is taking place in another state my cousin is marrying and we got the invitation a few months ago time has moved forward and now the wedding is in a week already out of the blue, my cousin, let's call him Matt, texts me with something along the lines of, you're going to tattoo me on my wedding day. I was a bit confused as I never even thought of bringing my equipment, since I also didn't plan a guest spot or anything. Guest spot is a tattoo artist working at another studio for a few days or weeks, mostly in a different area to grow the clientele. I jokingly asked if he has a machine, as I still hoped that he wasn't serious. He then just asked if I don't have one, and that one machine wouldn't take up that much space to take with. I replied that I didn't plan on bringing my equipment, that in fact contained more than just a machine, color, hygiene stuff, stencils, that's the purple stuff you put on the skin, then trace the tattoo with actual needles, etc. And that I'm not prepared to tattoo at a wedding, of which I don't know anything about, layout of the location, is it inside slash outside and so on. He then said he had planned on this and that it would mean a lot to him to both get a tattoo on his wedding day and that I'd be the one to tattoo him. Remember that this is the first time I'm hearing this. I again try to explain that I don't feel comfortable with that and that is quite short notice. As I work until me and my brother fly over to attend the wedding and a tattoo needs to be designed first, right? He saw my message but didn't reply anymore. This morning my mother called and she was furious. She asked why I couldn't pull my shit together and just tattoo Matt. I told her what I've previously told Matt as well, but she didn't want to hear it. She just said that it would mean a lot to her and Matt's family if I do that. And it could be my wedding gift. Then she hung up. I talked to my brother about it and he just shrugged it off and said, It would be nice of you though. I'm unsure what to do now. As I said, I'm not really comfortable with the whole situation, especially because I've never been guest spotting. I've never had to travel, let alone get on a plane with my equipment. But is that just selfish? I mean, it would mean a lot to apparently everyone, and I'm just saying no. Edit. One, I do have an actual wedding gift already, as they sent out a wish list with their invitations. There was a point that said artwork, because they recently moved into a bigger house, and apparently they want random artwork to decorate. I oil painted them a painting I spent several days on, so I also don't plan to give him a voucher as a gift. Two, Matty doesn't have any tattoos as far as I know. 3. I don't know what mum's problem is with all of this. I think she just wants to keep the peace. And we know the reason that she wants to keep the peace. Say it with me, guys. Because... Aimly! <laughs> That's such a bizarre request. And absolutely don't even consider doing this. You know, hygiene for one. There's loads of other risks involved in this as well. And I'm just trying to think of the logistics of this situation. So you're in a wedding. Is this, I'm assuming this is going to be around all the other guests. So everyone's going to be stood around you probably drinking. Because if you see someone getting tattooed at a wedding, of course you're going to wander over there and be like, what the fuck's going on over here? <laughs> what tattoo does he want? Tattoos can take hours. My sleeve took 16 hours plus. And I'm sure the dude's going to be in a nice suit. And when he has his tattoo, it's going to be all bloody and drippy and nasty. And I understand it gets covered up, but... Oh, at your wedding day? What the <laughs> What about his wife? <laughs> Absolutely, just tell him though. I want to know what's going through your mum's mind. I know we, we've got the but family thing going on here, but that's just such a wild thought process. Dr. Seagull says, not the arsehole. If Matt had his heart set on this happening at his wedding, then he should have discussed it with you as soon as possible. Not one week before. Jeez, he knows a tattoo is permanent, right? He wants you to just show up with a kit in an unsterile environment and what? Just wing out a design on him. No prep, no planning, all on his wedding day. It would have been better he had contacted you and gotten the tattoo done before the wedding and he could have revealed with it at the ceremony or healed, etc. Getting it done on the day, for what reason? 
This just seems silly as fuck, but mainly not your problem. He should have given you more notice, that's on him. Maybe offer to do it at your shop after the wedding. Tell him you'll look for inspiration for the design at their wedding so it can be unique to their day. And people react so differently to tattoos as well, like the, the pain tolerances. Usually I'm fine with them, but when I had like the sleeve done, on the second session that I had some done and they were also covering up a part of an old tattoo, we had to go over it and over it and a boy i felt so ill after that op replied to that previous comment and said i especially don't understand why I should tattoo at a wedding since you can't or shouldn't combine getting tattooed with drinking alcohol and knowing matt there'll be plenty of alcohol at this wedding harry sarah says not the arsehole it's inappropriate of him to expect you to work for free and an event to which you are a guest are you even licensed to tattoo in another state the entire thing sounds ludicrous Tell your cousin your hourly rate. Build in the PIA rate for hauling your equipment and he needs to cover your flights and hotel. After all, flying in a trained professional to perform a service costs money. Oh, and he needs to pay up front since this is a special service. Opie says I am actually licensed and I mean I would ask for money but apparently they planned this as a wedding gift like my mum suggested. I can't imagine what they're even thinking. I'm sorry to keep butting in with my own comments here but how disgustingly rude is that as well to that they've they've planned this as a wedding gift from you without your saying it at all cheeky bastards b whoop whoop says not the arsehole but aside from other things isn't the tattoo like a wound like it hurts and is red and inflamed and needs to be kept sterile and separated from the external environment from the start how does he plan this to happen during a wedding also depending on the design it can take hours he wants to sit on an uncomfortable chair for hours while others party. Opie says yes exactly, the tattoo needs to be kept safe, especially in the first 24 to 48 hours. And yes, it takes time. I'm not sure he is really aware of that or the pain. I don't think he has a tattoo already. One more comment from Buttercup Grump because I'm enjoying these comments. Not the arsehole. Your cousin and mum are out of their damn minds. <laughs> it's not as simple as plugging in a machine. There's so much involved, especially if you want the tattoo to be good and safe. I'm not even talking about the time it takes to design the tattoo either. I was at a tattoo convention a few weeks ago because I was there early. I watched the artists bringing in their equipment, all of it. It was definitely more than could fit in a suitcase. Whenever I read these stories, I get vivid images of what it looks like. And, and I'm kind of picturing like this barn cut conversion kind of thing, like hanging lights all the way across you know beautiful scene magical scene people gathered around on circular tables talking chatting drinking having a good time celebrating the couple wife sat up on the head table she's eating her meal and then you've got a hoopie <laughs> and the groom in the corner <laughs> i mean what the fuck anyway i'm gonna shut up now op comes in with her up there and says so the last hours have been a lot First off, I called my mum and wow, she asked me again, this time very friendly. If I want to tattoo Matty at his wedding and again, I said no, with all the reasons I've previously given her, plus some of the very good points you guys had. Before she could say anything else, I added that I felt like she wouldn't take me and tattooing seriously. She didn't say anything for a bit until she tried to explain that she really thought it wasn't a big deal. I told her again that it is and that my mum of all people should know how my job works. She agreed and apologized profusely. I then asked her if she'd like to attend and watch me work on a client's appointment and to my surprise, she said yes. Mum is tagging along tomorrow. Now to Matty, or rather his bride. I finally got a hold of the bride, let's say her name is Becky, and asked her about the request her fiancé confronted me with. She seemed surprised as she apparently had heard from my aunt that I made them something for their new house. She assumed it would be a painting since I'm an artist of the family and it's known that I also paint. I confirmed that, but Matty has come forward with this out of the blue, and that's not a good idea for many reasons. She agreed with me immediately. I think she does have tattoos. She thanked me for telling her as no one else did. Becky seemed really mad, but she seemed to pull herself together. I would have lost it. I'm assuming Becky confronted Matt after our call because only three to four hours later, I checked the family group chat and there was a message from Becky. There'll be no ceremony on the 13th as Matt and I decided we aren't getting married. Ooh -hoo. Matt and I have things to figure out so please text or call us tomorrow if you have questions. For the rest of the day, we'll be on flight mode. 
After dinner, Becky called me and apologized for Matt again. She said it was a stupid idea of his and that he just thought it would be cool. She then informed me that she still wants me to fly over for the wedding day as she'd be hosting a party instead of a wedding. Everything is paid for anyways and she doesn't want anything to go to waste. I asked if they broke up. Not yet, but I'm going to stay at my sister's place until next week. I'm assuming Matt hasn't been too great, but I'm sure I hear about it. Apparently my brother and my mum aren't invited. Lol. My call must have been the last straw, but as far as I am concerned, Becky is handling it gracefully and Matt will be okay too, I'm sure. So I'm going to a party, but did I just make a new friend? Thanks you all for having my back. I want to know what's going to happen next. I am invested in this one. I was a bit shocked that they actually broke up the wedding over this. I kind of feel like there's more going on behind the scenes. What do you guys think? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story comes from Bitter Psychology 6426 and says, Am I the arsehole for telling my parents that if they don't like our lifestyle, they can leave? I'm upset, so I'll get right to the point. My husband and I both make well over six figures, but we work long hours and as a result, when we're not working or at the gym working out, we just want to veg out. So we, when not working, will generally make breakfast but order out lunch and dinner or go out to eat. If we are working, we eat out all three meals. Our loans are paid off, we own our condo and we have no children. So eating and ordering out makes us happy. We also have a cleaning lady come twice a week to clean out home and do our laundry. Our parents came to visit and were upset that we didn't cook for them the whole week, except for breakfast. We took the week off because we both knew both sets of parents were coming. We told them that we don't cook except for breakfast, but our condo is right next door to a plaza and has a grocery store, and they are welcome to cook if they like. But there were quite a few restaurants that we have yet to take them to, so why not try one of them? They got us on how much money we were spending and my mother-in-law got on me when the cleaning lady came and said I should be doing the cleaning because she worked and cleaned and took care of kids so it doesn't get why I can't. Which pissed me off so I went off and told her because I'm not superwoman and I have no desire to be and refuse to try and if she wants a participation trophy for being overworked and underpaid she can head to the bar and have a shot of Jameson's. I then told her and my parents that I did not spend four years in college and two in graduate school to play Florence from the Jeffersons. It's an 80s show that my parents love to watch. So they went on to complain about how much money we were wasting. My husband told them that is not my husband told them that it is not their money, it's ours, and we don't consider it a waste. We told them the last thing we want to do when we get off from work is cook and clean. My husband told his mum that he never understood why she would work herself to the bone like that even when he and his sisters tried to pitch in and help. She insisted on doing everything herself. I told her I will not be doing that. So they went on about an emergency fund. We told them before we started living the way we do. We made sure our student loans were paid off and we each have a year's salary saved up plus investments. So we're good, thank you. My dad tried to be intrusive and ask how much money we both made. And we said, none of your business. At the same time, which made us both laugh but they were not laughing. They didn't like our reaction and felt we were wasting money. We told them if they have a problem with our lifestyle, they could all leave. So they Ubered to a hotel. We really didn't want them to leave, just to drop the subject. So are we idiots for telling them they could leave? Now, I don't blame OP for their reaction in this at all, but I kind of question them what they want to get out of their relationship with their parents. Obviously, they didn't want them to leave, so... I'm guessing that they have some kind of good relationship. I'm kind of trying to think if I ever had a situation like that with any of my parents. And I'm, I'm just thinking of the situation when I started doing YouTube. And, you know, I was talking to my dad about it. And I love my dad to bits. And I hope you've got that from when I've spoke about him in the past through this channel. That will never change. And he's from a very, very different generation. And I was talking to him about when I was going to start doing YouTube you know, I was going to leave my my cup, my old job and, and start doing YouTube full time. And he was adamant, you know, it's a waste of time. You know, it's a bad decision, etc., etc. Hasn't been so far. It might, he might prove me wrong one day. But it just felt like a very different generation talking to me. And there's no way I'd want to, you know, damage our relationship over his views of that. And, and I knew he would never quite 
get where I was coming from with what I was doing and you know and many people working in social media these days he just didn't get that so I learned quickly not to talk about that kind of stuff with him I occasionally mentioned the YouTube stuff you know people wishing him well on YouTube when he was going through what he went through but it was an unconstructive conversation whenever it came up really so I, that wasn't the conversation we'd have really I think it's just a different type of lifestyle and that's the only way I can relate it to Opie in this story. I'm not sure where I was going with that. Maybe a generational thing. Again, not excusing it because frankly it is none of their business and I totally agree with you on this one. So the first commenter says not the arsehole but you're living a lifestyle they simply can't understand. You've been smart with your money, didn't have a bunch of children to pay for, have good educations, good jobs. It sounds as if you've tried to explain without giving them info that is none of their business. You went a bit far with the you can leave as they did not have much of a choice at that point. When you talk to them eventually just tell them nicely that your finances and what you spend are not up for discussion. My son and daughter-in-law have a lifestyle similar to yours and unlike your parents I'm so happy they're able to enjoy life without worries and finances. Born Eggplant says, not the arsehole, but if you want to avoid hurt feelings going forward, it sounds like you really do, then learn some grey rocking strategies and make a habit of these being your go-to. I guess since you're trying to make peace and make amends, it would be counterproductive to point out to them that choosing a hotel when given the option of that or dropping the damn subject was completely lacking in any financial foresight and a waste of money. Condessa Stay says, my own parents could never understand the concept of quality of life. I watch them work themselves to the bone and still feel like failures because they weren't working 24-7. Trying to explain that I work to live and not live to work was like speaking Danish to English speakers. I had no common vocabulary to go on. It seems to me that you and your husband have taken care of the essential things like good grown-ups. They should be proud that they help create such responsible adults. One more comment from Amberlicious who says, My mother-in-law believes that our chosen professions are less than and we bought our first house together. Questioned if we could afford it. When we bought our first business, she also questioned that. When we sold it years later and took nine months off, she questioned that. When we sold our house and bought a new business in another state, she questioned that. Some people cannot comprehend that doing things your way is the best way for yourselves. Yes, still killing it. Lol. The OP updates the post and says I've text both sets of parents and told them that I'm sorry for what I said and want them to come back as I never wanted them to leave. But I know what I said about them leaving was out of line. I just wanted to drop the subject but my way about it was wrong. I told them whether they decide to come back I would like to reimburse them for the hotel rooms. Second update. Yeah, we just met up at a restaurant near the hotel. They didn't want to eat so we sat at the bar and talked. We told them that our finances are our business. And though we told them that, if they didn't like it, they could leave. We were not literal when we said it. We just wanted to drop the subject. They continued that we are wasting money. We told them that it is our money to waste. And just because they consider it wasting money, we don't. We consider it one of the perks of our very fortunate life and it was not going to change. We told them that we appreciate their concern, but we know what we are doing. And they didn't have to agree with it, but it's not up for discussion or debate. We told them we would love to have them back and to enjoy the rest of the week with them but any comments or conversation about how we spend our money will not be allowed. They agreed and we're taking them to a restaurant a little off the beaten path that we know that they will love. No, they didn't apologize, but we didn't expect them to. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? As always, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments if you have a moment of your time to share them. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories, your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being involved. Truly, seeing the same folks pop up in the comments daily, you make my day. Thank you. And I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.